Hello everyone, this is Melanie from Melanie B's Creative Studio. And today I'm gonna show you another dry mounting technique. And this method is probably, would always be my first choice because of the fact that my adhesive is already on this foam board. Now I'm gonna link you to this pack of foam board that I found at 16 by 20. And they all have this adhesive surface. I'll put that in the description below for you to click on and find. Now, I did not see an 18 by 24, which would be a really good size to have since our canvases have a border and they're not exactly 16 by 20. With the border, you know, they're a little bit longer. So it would have been nice to have that option. I haven't seen that option yet. So I'm gonna show you how I measure the canvas and cut it down to fit my foam board. And so what you're gonna need is your canvas, um, just a pen and a measuring tape, a long ruler. Now you won't need a measuring tape if you have a longer ruler than this. Mine is 18 inches, but to be honest, you know, a 20 or 24 inch would be ideal. I just haven't gotten one yet. And I did find my T-square. So this one actually is the best option, but I have mine from college 10 years ago. I, you know, I'm not gonna tell you to run out and buy a T-square. But once you have all these materials, then it's that one-time investment. Now the 10 pack of the foam board was about $33 when I bought it. So you're looking at $3.30 per canvas to dry mount. If you go to Michael's, or an office supply store to have your pieces dry mounted like I've explained in prior videos, then you're gonna pay a minimum of $10 up to $15. And in some cases, they don't know to use what they call a Frame Express coupon. Is That's what discounts it down to 10 to $15. If they just give you a price without that coupon, it's gonna be insane, like 40 bucks. Y'all, I wouldn't pay 40 bucks for dry mounting but some of them do not know how to ring this up and some of them don't even know how to do it. So I feel like since we're all about to probably go back into a lockdown from the pandemic, this is gonna be a handy technique for you to use while you're stuck at home or if you just don't wanna spend that money. So let's get started and I'm gonna move some stuff out of the way and then we're gonna begin. So first let's take a look at this foam board. You'll notice that there's a grid already on it for cutting and that's super handy, but we're not gonna have to cut this down. Uh, now, if, if I was doing my custom piece, which is a 12 by 16, this would be fabulous because all I'd have to do is place my piece like this and then trim off this excess, but I could use these as a guide, which would be really nice. And I would know where to cut. So this is a 16 by 20, our canvas, is larger. Now let me give you an idea of how long this canvas is, and I'm just gonna lay it on my T-square and stretch it out. So this is about a 22 and three quarter inch in length, and it is 19 inches in width. So, you know, we're gonna have to cut it down completely. Now let's talk about how we're gonna measure and cut this. I wanna make sure I move the foam board out from under my surface. I do have a cutting mat. I forgot to mention this. I do have a cutting mat here and a utility knife. Um, if you would prefer, you can just use the pen and mark on the canvas and then cut it with scissors. It won't be as pretty or as clean, but you know what? It's not gonna matter because if you frame this piece, the quarter of an inch that's gonna overhang is gonna be under the lip of the frame. So that's gonna be hidden. So if it's not super pretty, it's fine. Unless you're just one of those people and I'm one of those people. So, <laughs> you know. Now, let me explain something here with the T-square. A T-square only works perfectly if it has a straight edge. So if I do this and I lay this down and let's just say I butt this up. Let me move this over a little bit so we can see what's going on here. Okay, so let's just say I butt up my T-square to my canvas like this, right? Well, this canvas is an uneven edge, so it's not gonna be a straight line. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark my piece where I need to trim it and make myself my own guidelines. In order to do that, I need to know what this art size is. And I can tell you this artwork size is 19 and a half. So it's a half inch short of being a 16 by 20. The reason I wanted to do it this way is because I'm not covering up any of my art once I frame this. The bottom line is, we need our foam board to stay 16 by 20 in order to fit into a standard 16 by 20 frame, okay? And then, like I said, the white that's gonna be left is fine because it's gonna go behind the little lip of the frame and you're not gonna see that. So let's get started cutting and measuring and all that fun stuff that everybody hates so much, um, or maybe it's just me. So here's what I'm gonna do. Since I know this is 19 and a half inches wide, but I need it to be 20, I'm gonna add a quarter of an inch when I mark. So I'm going to line up against the red little border here, and I'm going to line up with a quarter of an inch on this side. So what that means is there's a quarter of an inch that's gonna go all the way here, right? So if I have this measured at one quarter of an inch and I mark it, and then I'm gonna go a quarter of an inch past here, and then I'm gonna mark that. I'm just using this other ruler. Now I've already done I've already done this other corner, but I'm gonna move up my camera. So I've marked it here. So it's a quarter of an inch on that side, a quarter of an inch on this side, and that is gonna give me my 20 inch length, okay? So now we need to find out what our width is, and I can do that with this 18 inch ruler. So our width is gonna measure 15 and three quarters. So that means I need to leave an eighth of an inch on this border. All right, so basically what I wanna make sure I'm pointing out is that each of these openings, this art opening may be different. Mine might not be the same as yours. So be sure that what you do is you measure your artwork from borderline to borderline and then from borderline to borderline. And then take that number and subtract it from 16 by 20. Now, a lot of you guys use the metric system, which is probably even easier with the math. So yeah, that's probably the smart way to do it. But then I wanna make sure I'm marking where I need to trim before I even trim anything. I have marked here and I have marked here all the way. So to cut it, I'm gonna line it up and I'm using a metal ruler, you guys, because a metal ruler, if you use a plastic one and it slips, your utility knife is just gonna go straight into it. I would like to be on the outside of the line that I'm cutting. I'm gonna show you what I mean, like this, okay. That way I can visually check to see if my distance is the same all the way across. All right. So now I'm gonna get my utility knife, my cute little utility knife. Now you could use an X-Acto for this, whatever you have handy. Now I'm gonna try to be careful not cut my fingers off here. I'm trying to get started is the tricky part. What I'm gonna do is just show you a different way, which is to draw the line and then use scissors. So some of you, that's all you may have, okay? So we're gonna draw our line using a long ruler. Again, it does not have to be a T-square. I just have one, this is the only thing I have that's long enough. And I'm gonna try to get a straight line here. Now I'm using an erasable gel pen which may or may not help me in the long run, but I could erase if any lines show. There's really no way you could center this on that foam board accurately 
and have even borders on all sides, it would just be a really difficult process. So I know this probably seems like a difficult process, but I'm sure it's much easier than the other way. But now I can just use scissors and cut this if I would like to. All right, so we've cut our piece down to 16 by 20. Now let's get the foam board. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna peel back this protective layer to reveal our adhesive. Now you guys, I have not used these because <laughs> you know how I do. I'm like, oh, I got this. Let me just do it for a video. <laughs> There's no trial and error. There's a lot of error, but at least I can edit that part out. But there's, I don't just like make big plans ahead or anything. I don't do it once and go test my theory or whatever. I just kind of jump right in. I'm gonna pull it back just enough to expose my edge here because I'm not sure how permanent this is. And then I'm gonna line up a corner and I'm gonna pull like I'm stretching my canvas, right? And I'm gonna lay down the other corner, okay? Now, before I move anything else, I'm going to grab my brayer so that I can get this super smooth. So I'm going to smooth this out here before I move on and just making sure I have good grip, no bubbles, and good contact. Now this was a little wrinkly too, so I wanna make sure that when I'm doing this dry mounting process, that this gets out any little wrinkles or ripples at the same time. Okay, now we're gonna pull this back and expose more of the adhesive. This is just the careful way to do it. Now as I'm smoothing out with my hands, I'm moving slowly and I am feeling for any bubbles or ripples and I am pushing those out at the same time. Now once I get this down, I'm gonna brayer it for better adhesion, okay? But I wanna make sure all these bubbles and ripples are coming out as I am placing this down. All right, let's do our next section. And you'll notice I'm only pulling back about three inches at a time. I don't want it to go too far because if I accidentally touch it and it snags, you know, my canvas, it like grabs onto it. I don't want it to create bubbles and me not be able to lift it back up. So let's smooth these bubbles and push them out as we go. You can feel them better with your hands than the brayer, but I am going to brayer this once I'm finished getting it completely laid down. Because this was more wrinkly in the center, I want to wait. That is such a feeling on my, oh, that canvas texture is like, oh, it feels weird on my hands. Oh. Just smoothing it out over and over is like, oh, weird feeling. All right, now I'm slowly going to creep down here till the end. I gotta make sure I don't have any bubbles on the outside too because I'm kind of overlooking those right now. This may not be 100% perfect, but once I get paint on it, it won't even be noticeable. All right, I'm stretching it as I'm going down with it. Okay, now I've got it down. Now it's not exactly straight, but you know, it's, it's fine, it's fine. Once it goes in a frame, you won't notice that, right? All right, let's brayer. If you have a rolling pin, that would work as well. I don't want you to have to feel like you gotta go buy a million tools to do stuff yourself. But I used to have a rubber stamp that said, why buy a card for $5 when you can make your own for 300? <laughs> 300 is 
definitely an understatement for my, for my rubber stamp and inks collection. I actually purged about 100 ink pads recently before I, when I did my studio and narrowed it down to like eight, which really like makes my eye twitch. But I had to purge to make things fit. All right. Okay, you guys, so all those wrinkles, all those ripples, all, the, all of that extra stuff that was going on in this canvas, they're gone, okay? So, now I wanna show you, I'm gonna flip this over and I'm gonna show you because my edges aren't completely straight, right? But if I need to trim off this extra little bit, then I can do that. It's not a big deal. Do with whatever you've got. Really, in this case, I'd probably prefer to use an X-Acto knife, but I'm gonna try to just use my utility knife here, just to clean it up. It, that, it doesn't even matter if that's there, but um, to fit in a frame nicely, I'm gonna go ahead and just take it off. So I trimmed off all that little extra crap. And down here, it's pretty straight. It's not great, but it's fine, because it'll go in that frame and it'll be perfect. But that's it, y'all. Dry mount it yourself. Now, if I had done this, without recording, without moving slowly, without explaining along the way, this process would probably take me 10 to 15 minutes. And that's because I have a little bit of experience with it. For you, you know, it might take you 20 minutes, but how long does it take you to go to Michael's, to drive where you need to drive, drop off your stuff, wait for it, come back later to pick it up, and you know, that's just my thinking. So I'd rather do things myself if I can. Now what I wanna do is give this some time to just sit. I'm gonna play something heavy on it, like my shipper box, cause it actually is about the same size. And that way the adhesion has time to just sit because when it's a fabric, like a canvas, it is not gonna adhere the same way as if this was paper. So, you know, like I can still peel it off. Like I would be able to do a dry mount. But in this case, you know, I don't want it to come off. So I don't want it to, I don't want to remove it if I don't have to, but it should be on here to work on, to frame. And once you get in a frame, it's not gonna lift. So there you go, you guys. My pretty dry mounted piece. This one's gonna be for my little grandson, Colton, because he has his pet chameleon. And it, although this is a panther chameleon, his is a, I think it's just a green chameleon. But anyway, I just thought he would love this. If I ever paint it, I'll go ahead and gesso this one right now so I can come back and tell you how it turned out and whether it rippled or buckled after I did that because it's liquid, so. All right, so I'm gonna do a quick update here. I went ahead and gessoed this canvas with a very thin layer of gesso. I did it exactly how I normally do it, just you know, kind of brushing out any strokes. I did not sop down, pour on or anything any of the gesso, I just took it out of my little container like this and applied it with my brush like this as carefully as I could. Then immediately, I took it into the bathroom with my blow dryer and I heat set it and, and dried it. The reason I did that is so the heat would maybe kind of activate the adhesive underneath and make it hold really well. So I, that was just kind of my thinking. I'm not sure that it made a difference, but if I saw bubbles on the edge, then I was kind of, once I had that area dry, I was smoothing those out and pushing them down while it was still warm to make sure that I had good adhesion. So right now I'm gonna take this brayer one more time and I'm pressing as hard as I can, just making sure there's 100% adhesion to everything. I don't want any bubbles. So that way I can come back and kind of see if it bubbled up or any of that. Now, what I'm gonna do lastly is, these are optional steps right now, you guys, but I wanted to test out, you know, what would happen if we added the liquid gesso and all that stuff. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the piece of adhesive paper that I had removed and I'm gonna put it on the shiny side and put it down. That way it doesn't get stuck to the gesso. So now I'm just gonna lay this shipper box on the top to make sure that no uh -huh. bubbles form while this is completely curing. So that's it and I appreciate you guys being here. Thank you for 
watching. Be sure to subscribe to my channel. Join me on Patreon. Join me on the Facebook group. And I will see you back soon. Thanks as always for watching.